Man Leverett then, would it be fair to say then, 10 years on, that the, the so-called Bush Doctrine remains central to U.S. foreign policy? Absolutely. The Bush Doctrine of Preventive War, and that was essentially to distinguish between what had been U.S. policy previously. If the U.S. Po United States had been attacked or was about to be attacked, we would then strike at military bases in countries, Sudan, Afghanistan, etc. Bush fundamentally transformed that, that the United States would take it upon itself to decide who, what, where, and when we would attack on the basis of the possibility that there could be, at some point down the road, years from now, an attack on the United States. Bush enshrined that as U.S. foreign policy, and that legacy has been, I think, profound. Obama has added to that, has taken it, and added to it this component of the possibility that there could be uh, egregious human rights violations in particular countries to attack them in this doctrine of preventive war. Arguably, though, wasn't this a doctrine that Osama bin Laden perhaps didn't have much of a problem with it, uh, uh, keeping the U.S. in a state of permanent war, mm -hmm. of constantly attacking Islamic countries, further alienating many of them, while draining the U.S.'s coffers? I mean, this, uh, it, wasn't it rather unwittingly falling into al-Qaeda's hands, perhaps? Well, one of the things that's really astonishing is that in the wake of 9-11, there was this constant rhetoric coming out of the Bush White House, where I worked that the problem that al-Qaeda and terrorists had with the United States were our values, that they hated our treatment of women, they hated our religious toleration. But if you look at what al-Qaeda had said over the past decade before 9-11, there was nothing about how they hated the status of women in the United States or religious tolerance of women in the United States. What they hated was not what we did here in our infidel homeland, it's what we were doing over there. But that was the one thing that was never addressed by the Bush White House and is still not addressed by Obama today, the impact that U.S. policy has had in fomenting, generating, recruiting terrorists overseas. This is a question that Don Rumsfeld actually remarkably asked when I was at the White House. Is U.S. policy and the U.S. quote-unquote war on terror actually producing, promoting, and recruiting more terrorists than it's killing? A fundamental question that was never answered by the Bush administration and is still not being answered by the Obama administration today. It's another issue that we, we, we've now seen 10 years on is that once, quote, liberated, whether it be Iraq or Afghanistan or, or perhaps unwittingly in, in other areas of the, of the Middle East and North Africa, these countries um, want to be sovereign, independent states and may indeed feel more comfortable with other people, uh, with other countries rather, on the U.S. hit list. Was that ever d discussed, perhaps? No, there seems to me this fundamental state of denial among, not just um, among Republicans or Democrats when they're in office, but among the U.S. foreign policy elite, that what people want, not just in the Middle East, but in a lot of the, what we used to call the third world, is they want independence. They want independent foreign policy, something that adheres to the culture, values, beliefs, and concerns of their citizens, however that turns out. But the United States, U.S. foreign policy elites think that, given a choice, people will not choose to be independent. They will choose to be secular, first and foremost, and pro-American, even if it means pro-American to sign up to a U.S. policy for rendering their own citizens to places to be tortured, even if it means to to work with the Israelis to, to keep a civilian population under siege in Gaza, we still somehow think that people would choose to do that. You see that happening right now in Syria. Somehow a post-Assad government in the U.S. foreign policy elite thinking will be will somehow work better with the Israelis, will somehow keep the border with Israel more secure, collude in the, 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 the siege of the civilian population, continue to render terrorists for torture. We somehow think that. We don't recognize that a post-Assad government will be more reflective of the people's views and beliefs and will not be more pro-American. And that's why countries like Iran, who have an independent foreign policy, for all of the concerns and criticisms we may have about Iran, they have an independent foreign policy, and that means they're going to be able to work with all of these states in a much more effective manner, potentially, than the United States as they become more independent.